Hello, everybody, and uh, happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody in the uh, United States. Um, this week, I wanted to make a video about leveling a sawmill bed, and um, it's been about uh, five, six months since I put in my sawmill, and I haven't uh, checked the the bed or the bunks or the track since then. And you know, we've gone through a season change. I'm sure the lumber in my base has dried out and and just you know shrunk or moved and so um, I'm getting ready to saw a bunch of lumber and I figured well this is a good time to check everything again and, and make sure it's it's all back to true because really having a, a, a flat sawmill base is is probably the most fundamentally important thing uh, in a sawmill setup I mean if you want to look at the you know hierarchy of, of factors that go into cutting straight and square lumber I think you know having a nice true sawmill base is probably number one on the list so I want to talk about that today and I'm going to show two methods um, I'm going to briefly mention one and then focus on uh, the second method and so uh, let me start with the first method if you happen to have a laser level I've got one set up over here on a tripod and this is a, a Bosch unit uh, I picked this up on sale couple of years ago and I'll, I'll give a link to this uh, as well as the tripod um, down underneath the video but if you happen to have one of these uh, this is a super easy way to true up your sawmill base and when you're using a, a laser level like this you're gonna le both level it and get it flat and those are actually two different things um, for a sawmill base really it just needs to be flat it needs to be planar um and when the trolley rolls on it you know you want it to be rolling on a flat plane if it's level that's a bonus and you know having it level is going to make the trolley roll more predictably it's not going to be going uphill or downhill it's not going to be uh tipped which could affect how the saw um, head hangs on cables if your mill is set up like that way so level is good but really the most important thing is flat and um, when I go into the second method, that's really going to just check for flatness. But if you're using a laser level, you're going to be able to get flatness and level. And so what you want to do if you have one of these is set it up at the end of your track on a tripod. Or you could, you know, I could have nailed it, hung it on a nail on the wall of my sawmill shed. And what that's going to do is it's going to shine a laser light sheet down the track and that sheet's gonna go all the way down the track and what you can do then is just grab a, a tape measure put it on your bunks look for that laser line and get it set consistently side to side and then go to each bunk and and do that and uh, that's going to give you a really super easy way to, to get all your bunks flat and level and coplanar with each other. And uh, so, you know, if you have a laser, by all means, break it out and do that. Now, some disadvantages of the, of the laser, of course, is that it's harder to read in bright light. And you can see, you know, there's a big difference between the second bunk and the first bunk in terms of brightness because uh, uh, as that laser light sheet spreads out the um, intensity of the light uh, is is reduced so you know this might be hard to use in daylight you know if I go to this third bunk I can still see it but it's getting fainter uh, the other thing with these laser levels is the thickness of that laser spreads out the farther you get from the laser so you know by the time I get to the other end of the sawmill that that line could be an eighth of an inch thick um, and you'd have to be aiming for the middle of that line. Generally, that won't be a problem, but, you know, just keep that in mind. These aren't perfect. You have to know how to work with their uh, quirks and, and how they behave. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's method one. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have one of these, by all means, take advantage of it. Uh, it it's a great way to do it. And, again, I'll give some links uh, down below to uh, a couple different laser levels and, and uh, uh inexpensive tripod that I like using for for stuff like this and so let me uh, take a quick break and I'm going to set up some strings for method two and we'll be right back 
Okay, here we are back with uh, method two, and I'm gonna do this with one string. Uh, you could also do it with two strings, but I'm gonna show the method with one string. And so <clears throat> what I had done uh, when I set up my bass, I just put a nail down there and you know, run a string up over the end bunk, and I made these blocks with a little uh, piece of wood over here to keep it from tipping. Uh, on the end, that's a, a two by four, and I actually, I think I lightly planed that to make sure it was really nice and flat. And then I ran that string across over to the other end bunk where I have an identical block. And uh, I'll pull the string as tight as you can get it. I mean, you, you really want to take all the stretch out of that string. It needs to be tight, to, almost to the point where it feels like it's going to break. <clears throat> and so what that does uh, is establish pretty much a straight line between the two end bunks. And, um, you know, now the, the trick is just to get all the middle bunks to uh, match up to, to that same straight line. One thing I need to mention, um, because I'm using one string down the middle, here it's important to make sure your end bunks are level side to side and then check that as you go down the middle. If you were using string on each end, uh, you wouldn't need to do that, but um, here I've, the first really first step is to take my two foot level across both the end bunks and make sure uh, they're level and they, they were still level after all these uh, months. Then I went and checked all the other bunks. This guy was level. This guy was still level. Uh, this guy was low on that end and I made a mark. This guy was low on that end and I made a mark. And then this guy was low on that end uh, and I made a mark there. And just by having those marks there, that's going to tell me if, if if I need to raise and lower these bunks to get them um, in plane, um, according to the string going that way, knowing any side-to-side -side issues is going to help me you know where to adjust first and then where to check at the end. Of course, I, I checked this bunk. This one was uh, still nice and level, too. So from here, um, the procedure would basically be to go down all the middle bunks now and you want to check that the distance between the bunk and the string is the same as the thickness of that block of wood uh, that's on on each end and you, you could do this with a tape measure uh, at each bunk what I found a little bit quicker is I uh, made kind of a gauge block that I put some lines on and I know that the string needs to fall in between those lines as I go down. So I don't have to fool with a uh, tape measure or trying to remember numbers. I can just go to each bunk, pull that block up next to the string and see where the string falls relative to those lines. And so here you can, you can see that the string is below those lines and that means this bunk is gonna need to go down. I come over here, get that block in there. Uh, same thing here. This bunk is going to need to go down and by quite a bit, about an eighth of an inch. And then get over to this guy. Uh, this bunk will need to come down maybe about a sixteenth. Uh, this bunk's going to need to come down about a sixteenth to an eighth. This guy over here, this guy over here is the closest of all of them. Um, strings almost pretty much between the lines. I might bring this down a smidge, but I probably probably can't do much better than that. So this bunk, I think that bunk's good. And again, that one was level side to side. Um, I'm setting the string height on the end bunk, so I'm not going to worry about that one. I already checked that one to, to make sure that's level. So basically, I need to adjust one, two, three, four bunks in the middle. They all need to go down by varying amounts, about from an eighth inch down to about a sixteenth of an inch. 
And uh, so from here, the process will just be, um, you know, I'll take my gauge block and put it on this bunk, loosen up the pedestal bolts, and then adjust this guy until it's right. And um, I won't snug the, 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 the nuts up just yet. Going on to this next bunk, do the adjustment here, work my way down until I get to really the last one needed adjustment right here. Um, the thing with the Woodland Mills, some of these bunks are at a track joint and you're gonna, you're gonna have two pedestals to adjust. It's really not a big deal. You just gotta, you know, be careful. You're, you're paying attention so that you don't, you're not messing up that joint. You, you wanna adjust these both, you know, equally. So if you're raising or lowering the bunk, it's happening equally on both of those uh, pedestals. Um, so, you know, once I work my way to here and, and everything looks good, um, what I'll probably do is, and then walk back the other way with the block, just check everything, double check it again. And at that point when I'm, I'm satisfied with everything, uh, and then actually one final check would be to run the level, uh, across those middle bunks that I fiddled with and make sure they're again, uh, you know, back to level side to side. Uh, and if needed, make an adjustment there and, and you know, check the block. And so this is going to be an iterative process, but uh, I know when, when I set up the mill, this is the method I used. And uh, it really didn't take more than, you know, two passes to, to get everything right. It's kind of like, a, you know, you, you do your best and then you come back, back and you make a final correction. And, and it works out really well. Um, and so I'm not going to videotape the nuts and bolts part. You know, you kind of get an idea what I need to do and, and the rest would be... Uh, uh, kind of boring to watch. Okay, so I've made all the adjustments and I wanted to just show everybody the results. Came out really nice. So if we come over to this bunk here, you can see the string is right between those lines. And over here, bring that up. So right between the lines. Over here. Right between the lines and over here, right between the lines. And then uh, this next to the last bunk, I had originally thought I didn't need to adjust that. But uh, after I adjusted that guy, I came back and checked this one and it needed a, just a little bit of tweak. And, you know, that's because these rails are connected. So if you uh, make an adjustment on one end, it could affect... Uh, the next set and you can see I'm now I'm right between the lines here. So uh, This worked out really well, you know after checking the, the block I also verified that all the bunks are level side to side and um, It just works out really great and you know based uh, This method I think really your accuracy is going to be about half the thickness of a string so that's going to generally be about probably a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch if you want to be conservative. Uh, but it's just a real easy method, works well. Uh, I like using strings for all sorts of alignment and carpentry. And so I really trust this method and, uh, and I like it a lot. So that pretty much uh, sums it up for today. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. And I guess one key concept to remember is when you're Truing up your sawmill bed, the most important thing is that it's flat. Level is good to have, but the most important thing is that it's flat and that all your bunks are in one big plane. And that'll give you really the most uh, uh, true and, and quality uh, cut of your lumber. And however you want to troop your bed, whether it's with the string method I'm showing here, and I'm using one string, you could use two strings, um, or you set up the laser level. Both of those methods establish an absolute reference that you then set each bunk to match. And I think that's the key concept here is using an absolute reference. I know some folks will use a bubble level between each two bunks and then go between that two and these two and work their way down. The problem with that is that's... Uh, a floating reference 
And if you accumulate a little bit of error as you go along, you know, you could be way the heck off by the time you get down to the end, other end of your bed, especially if you have a long bed uh, like I do. So, you know, whichever method you use, make sure you're using an absolute reference. Use your first and last bunks to set up, you know, a straight line between two points and then get all your other bunks to be co-planar with that reference. Thanks for watching.